claim that you make a difference. Realize that you have the ability to potentially make unlimited revenue, unlimited salary, whatever you want to call it, bonuses. And, and when you have that ability, you have the ability to impact your family or whatever you're, you know, maybe there's a nonprofit, maybe you want a car, maybe you want to, I don't know what it is, but you have the ability to achieve what you want to achieve. And I think a lot of times as salespeople, we get kind of beaten down and we get in a rut. So it's like, gosh, pick yourself up. You have one of the best careers in the world where you can bet on yourself and make things happen for yourself and the people that you care about. So I think that's the first one. Get really reconnected that this is something special. Get clear what you play for. What's your why? Why am I doing this every day? Hey, what's up, Masters? Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery Podcast. And today we're with Carl Becker. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing great. Just been uh, out connecting, been on some podcasts, got a new book launching. It's just fun. I love talking about sales and getting salespeople excited. So I'm thrilled to be here today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, it, first off, congratulations on your new book. That's uh, super exciting. And you know, as, as I, I told you, I am, a, I, I'm a sales, I'm a natural born salesperson, been doing sales for 35 years, a, a big part of my, most of my life. And, um, I love it, you know, and I, I'm, I'm one of those guys like Zig Zig. I mean, you know, Zig, obviously Zig yeah. Zig's like, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be a salesman, you know? And, uh, so yeah, so it's great to have you and I'm excited to learn more about your book in your process. Um, it's called, Absolutely. uh, it's called iceberg iceberg selling. So uh, let, why don't you tell us what iceberg selling is, and then I'll I'll I'll, I'll introduce you. We'll do it a little back awesome. today. So uh, you know, I, like you, I've been selling since I was a kid. Uh, the story I like to tell is my sister was in the Girl Scouts, and when she was really young, I would go sell Girl Scout cookies with her. Why? Yeah, do I want to help her and be a good big brother? Sure, but it's because it was fun. You know, selling Girl Scouts is super fun. But uh, you know, fast forward, uh, I've been uh, run a lot of different companies and been a sales consultant coach for a long time. And I finally was like, you know what? There's some things I'm seeing all the time out there. And I think a lot of it is with sales. We only see what's on the surface and uh, it's really hard for us to go deep sometimes. Cause I think in our head, it's like, Oh, if I ask too many questions, well, I'm here to tell you, think about everybody, even yourself as an iceberg. That's the name of the book, iceberg selling. And really the, the concept here is, Hey, you're only going to see about 10%. But if you can start to see that 90% under the water, just like an iceberg, think Titanic, um, you can be more of service. You see more, you understand more, and then you can kind of get into co-creation. So the big thing for me is when I started to realize on all my sales calls, can I see people in their situations like an iceberg? It just opened up my success and other people too, as we started to play around with this concept. Well, I, I love it. It's it's what I do every day. Um, so major, I've got a few questions already just based on what you shared. Well, let me just tell people who you are. You are the founder in, uh, of uh, Iceberg Selling, and you run numerous companies. Uh, you've done that over the past 30 years, and you help uh, companies improve sales performance. Um, you support organizations to build high-performance teams to obviously uh, achieve their revenue goals. You're the author of uh, set up to win three frameworks to a high performance sales organization and sales and marketing alignment. Um, you have a BA in economics from Colorado College and an MBA from the University of Colorado Boulder. And uh, you can learn more about him at improvingsalesperformance.com. So, man, excited. And again, congrats on the new book. And I'm excited to talk about that today. But before I get into that, you said selling Girl Scout cookies was fun. Yeah. Do do more talk. Tell us about like, cause a lot, like a lot of kids are like scared, right? Or not just kids, but people in general are scared to do like that's like door to door, right? Did you do door to door, or did you do like like a BJ's or something? Oh you, no, you guys I mean, do we we didn't have the ability to go to Home Depot or anything like that and set up a table when when my sister was in the Girl Scouts. It was pure door to door, and mm. um, you know, two parts to your, to your question. I mean, we, we, we definitely bent the rules. We walked into retail shops, like the little drugstore in the corner and went up to the ladies behind the counter. Hey, you know, we live in the neighborhood. Here's some Girl Scout cookies. Can we sign you up? Because at that point in time, 
we didn't have inventory. You just took the order and came back. But mm. selling Girl Scout cookies, I think, is fun because it, it kind of has two value propositions. The first one is everybody loves a thin mint, right? Oh, my God, right? You could sell those until the cows come home. And the second is, I think there's this ability of feeling like you're helping someone. You, you see this young girl, in this case, it was me, um, you know, but out there doing it and they're not shy and they're talking and they're building their confidence and they're kind of learning social skills. And, you know, ultimately too, that organization, that service organization is about helping girls, you know, become the best they can be. So I, I think what's so great about that product is it has impact, uh, not only making you satisfied with a really fun cookie and tasting cookie, but feeling like your money's going towards something that you might believe in. Yeah. I love that. That's a, that's a great answer. So talk about, um, you know, you had mentioned that, that, you know, you on the, on the iceberg, you see 10%, uh, 90% is under the water. So how, do, how does that connect, connect that to your selling process Yeah, for the people listening? Yeah. Thanks for that. So the first thing I would say as salespeople, and I'm so glad you said, you know, I love selling. I'm proud of it. The whole book opens up with the phrase, I love salespeople, because I do think it's important for all of us before we start to go, hey, how do you do this thing to reconnect with our why? Why do we do this? It's probably about independence, freedom. If you think about salespeople, right, we, we make mortgages, we help companies grow. And the people that work at those companies, we help them make their mortgages or put their kids through college or take care of their parents. If you celebrate Christmas, put tree, you know, Christmas presents on their Christmas tree, right? So, so it is a very like high impact profession, but I think a lot of times because we're out there, all the time. Yes, no, uh, need confidence. Sometimes you have rough days. Getting really clear about who you are is the first part, because when you're clear on who you are and you're confident who you are, and when you show up, you know, people can see that and feel that. So back to kind of what's the process. I'll give you a high level because I would imagine you have some things in your life that are very aligned to this as well. Uh, the first is, you know, ha realizing that everyone's an iceberg and that you are. And I think an underlying theme is the more that you can show up authentically and show uh, how you are and share your stories and why you sell this product, why you're excited about it, that kind of allows the other person to share too. One of the tips I like to say is ask somebody the question you want them to ask you. And you see this happen all the time, right? Hey, how'd you get in this job? You know, uh, how, how's your family? Where do you live? You know, and, and the other person's like, well, where do you live? Right. But that starts to build rapport. But to kind of get to the meat of it, there's five steps. We can talk about any of them, but the first one is like, do the research, right? Make sure you know who you're going to talk to. That might be even looking in your CRM. Maybe there's been a salesperson that's talked to them in the past. So like, make sure you can recognize who they are, where they're coming from. Then set yourself up for success. If you do have that meaning, lay a blueprint out. This is what we're going to do today. Get some buy-in. Um, then move move to rapport. That's where we, we are authentic. We ask questions and we listen. We seek to understand. We meet them where they are. And then one of my favorite things is testing for success, which is really co-creating. Hey, based on what I heard, what do you think about this, right? And that's when people kind of self buy in. And then the last part, I think all of us in sales know, always have a mutual next step, a clear one. But I think a lot of times we get in our head and we're afraid that if we ask for this next step, we might erode that rapport. And I'm here to tell you, the more you are of service by telling people what's the next step and locking, locking that down, the more successful you're both going to be. So that's the real high level overview. Happy to talk about yeah. any of those components. Yeah, no, that, that is great. Uh, you know, and to your point, what you said about asking the next step, I think for some, for some people, uh, Carl, that when you don't ask for the, the sale, it actually hurts you. It, it, people lose trust because they're like, well, hold on a second. Is this, you know, especially uh, like we'll use a real estate agent as an example. A lot of times you're there, you're interviewing for a job to help them get their home sold. And, and, and they want somebody that's going to ask for the sale, right? They want somebody that's going to be confident in asking. So sometimes it has the, you know, you think, oh, I'm just, I don't want to be pushy, but at the same time, like how much do you see that as well? I mean, I think that's something that I've noticed over the years. I love that call out. It's really smart. And I think part of rapport building is trust. And I think a lot of times a buyer starts to trust the salesperson and sees them more as a guide. And in a way, they're kind of saying, I trust you enough to help me make the right choice. You know more about this thing than I do. So please help me. And that might be kind of that thing that we feel if like we're an intuitive salesperson. I feel the trust. I feel that they just wanted me to go, you know, Mike, this is the house that you want. Like we've been talking about this for months. Right. But I think sometimes we have that trigger in our mind that if we, if we 
seem pushy or too much of a guide, all of a sudden, you know, we're not going to be liked. And, you know, I would say, you know, you're in the business of change and helping people realize uh, the change that they want, solve their problems. Um, it's less about being liked. I'm not saying don't be liked. I'm just saying sure. your number one mission is help that person solve their problem. That's why we're in sales. We're problem solvers. So, so for people listening, Carl, how does somebody, I'm trying to think of the best way to ask this question. Like, how does a salesperson, like you want to confidently ask, you know, for, for the sale ask, you know, close at the same time, you don't want to be pushy, right? Cause there is a place where you can't. So how does somebody do that for, yeah. for people listening? Right. I'll tell you how I do it and how I explain it in the book. And to me, I, I, I really like the idea of, of like, what hat am I wearing? So when my first book set up to win, we play this game of hat trick and it's kind of like, Hey, right now I need to put my advisor hat on, or right now I'm going to put my, I'm your boss hat on, or right now I'm going to put, I'm your father hat on if I've got kids. So what I would recommend you do is you kind of let them know you have a brainstorm hat on. And this kind of gets this whole concept of co-creation. And if you're worried that you're going to come out of the gate too hard, then say something like this. Um, you know, David, I, I hope I understood what you were talking about. I just want to share an idea or two. It might be more of a brainstorm. I'd love to get your reaction. And, you know, if I'm off center, let me know. But let's solve this together. Can, you know, I'd really like to solve this together. I'm thinking based on what you told me that a good next step might be, or what do you think if we, but I'm making mm. it a question, but they know I'm, I'm kind of in this brainstorm. Like I'm trying to test to see if I got you right, but I'm also leaving the door open that if I didn't, I haven't burnt that bridge. Right. And I think that's the difference, right? If we tell somebody, okay, this is what you need to do. Nobody wants to be told what to do. We all know mm. that the more you and I can get in agreement and create a solution together, it's yours. It's mine. It's both of ours. So that's what I try to do. I just say, hey, you know, I've got an idea. I might be wrong, but ultimately I really want to help you out. What do you think if? And, you know, I tell you nine times out of 10, I'm either really close or, you know, Carl, that's kind of right. But I also was wondering about, and now, great. Now we're in dialogue. Now we're solving it together. And that's how I do it. I, and it works really well. Yeah, smart. And and so if if you think about the sales process, and you know this, I mean, I it's uh it's interesting just because I I you and I do a similar a similar thing obviously right I'm a consultant as well in this in the space and um if you and you tell me what you think about this but I feel like if if you've done everything right leading up to the ask it should it should just be like yeah of course it makes sense Carl to move forward with you right like yeah. but if there were things leading up to that that didn't were either a rub or it didn't seem right. right? Like, is that, that's kind of like where the breakdown is. Right. And if you go back to the, well, you tell me, and, but I, I feel like where it happens is, is, is in the iceberg is in the going deep. Right. Talk, talk to us about that. It seems like that's where a lot of, at least from my experience, that's where a lot of the mistakes are made. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think that's the whole advantage here. And we all have competitors, right? There's usually another person or service or whatever that someone's considering other than whatever we are representing. And I would just say a lot of what we're talking about creates not only a competitive advantage, because quite frankly, a lot of people just won't put in the work. You know, they'll see what's on the surface and they'll say, oh, based on what you, you know, what you put in your email or on the intake form or what you told me in the last five minutes, I think you should blank, right? And, and I'll tell you, you know, for me, it, it's kind of like this. I'll, I'll do a quick digression. If you're in a relationship, you've probably had this experience. Your partner comes home and they open the dishwasher and they're like, oh, my God, you loaded it wrong. Right. And they're all frustrated about how you loaded the dishwasher or how you clean the windows or how you made the bed, whatever it is. And I'm going to tell you, it's probably not that it's probably not the dishes. It's probably not the bed. It's probably not that there's streaks on the windows. There's probably something in your relationship or something in that person's life that's causing that. And so that's the whole idea of the iceberg. Right. If I if I only start to debate or say, well, no, you said I could, you know, load the dishwasher however you want it, however I wanted. What are you, why are you so pissed off? Right. That's kind of that top 10%. I didn't go deep, but if I said, Hey, I'm really sorry. I, I loaded the dishwasher the wrong way. I was really trying to help out. I know you've been busy. Is there something else going on? Do you want to just like, let me turn off my phone and be with you for five or 10 minutes. What's going on in your life right now? Most likely I'm going to find what's going on. And at that point in time, I can be much more effective and accurate in my solution, in my recommendation, my path forward. And so I, I'm really with you, tracking with you. If you're going to tell somebody what you think they should do, 
my my big guide, my big aha sign would be make sure you really understand as much of that iceberg because that's where you're going to get it right. If you're not putting in the time to ask the why behind what's going on, yeah, you might have all the confidence in the world, but you might have misread the situation. And I think that's ultimately what I'm trying to communicate with this whole iceberg concept is spend a little bit more time, learn a little bit more. And as you do that, your odds of getting it right go up dramatically. So two things. Number one is uh, why don't more salespeople do that? Why don't they go deeper? Yeah, I would say um, my first one is probably fear. And if you know anything about me, you know, I love salespeople and I'm always there to help them. So I'm really not trying to dig on anybody. But I think as humans, we're, we're, we're worried about conflict. Um, we're worried about not being liked or being misunderstood or causing pain in somebody. Right. So I think there's this level of anxiety that, you know, if I if I ask a question, if I go deeper, um, I'm risking maybe I'm risking my relationship. I'm risking that they might not think I understand them. I, I, I might be looking like I'm a fool or I don't know as much as I thought I did. There's there's usually some inner story about us that's preventing us from doing that. And, you know, I would just say when I'm coaching or even when I'm just talking to someone, it's like, let's take a minute. You know, um, if I asked you the following question about a lead, you know, why do you think you might close them? And you tell me, and then I ask you a follow-up question, tell me about their world. And you can't tell me about their world. Like if you think, if you're listening right now and you're like, Hey, these are my top prospects. These are the deals I might close by the end of the month. And if I said, tell me about their world. And if you're like, I can't tell you about your world. There's probably a clue there. And I would say most of the time we don't do it is we're distracted. We're worried that we're going to upset the apple cart. Um, maybe we're worried that we're going to come across, oh, I didn't really hear them the first time. Maybe I should have known that answer. And if I ask them, they're going to realize that I don't know it. There's usually some inner game part that's slowing us down. And I would just say, start getting used to sharing more about you so that they know that you're vulnerable and you're willing to share. And then you're going to find that it's much easier to ask them a question because you've already kind of patterned that for them versus out of the gate. Well, tell me about that, right? Like it, it, it's, it's about creating that context and that comfort or what I would call rapport. Yeah. And also, I, I mean, when somebody's like, if you're doing it for, you know, like you really want to help the person. Right. Like I can't, like there's this old saying, I'm sure you heard it. Like, it's uh, it's prescription without diagnosis is malpractice, right? Have you heard that yeah. before? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So it, 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 and so I, I feel like a lot of salespeople, and I'm sure you see this, which is why you wrote the book, because the title speaks to that. You know, they you just like it's like you said, they're, they're focusing on the ten percent. That's what they know. Okay, based on the ten percent, here's what you should do. But it's the ninety percent. Like the ten percent is almost irrelevant, right? It's Absolutely. And I think there's also other factors that put pressure on us. I mean, think of the sales managers you might have had. Uh, you know, we got to close this deal. We got to make quota. And, and, and so I think it kind of puts this pressure on shortcutting. And we might not see it as shortcutting, but it's like, oh, my God, I'm stressed. I have all this stuff to do. I've got to make this call, this call, this call. You know, instead of relaxing into it and being like, hey, there's a couple of mindsets I talk about in the book. One is lifetime value, right? Like, are we playing for the transaction right now? or this transaction and all the others for the next 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 years or whatever it might be. And in real estate, right? Like people buy houses, people refer their friends, there's changes, people get divorced, they get married, they have families. Like there's there's humans. Whenever there's humans, there's a lot of change. So why not play for the long-term value? The other part is just being of service. How do I keep providing value? Well, it's really hard to do that latter one, providing more value if I don't know much about you, right? Providing value isn't just like, hey, are you ready? Hey, are you ready? And I'm calling you and sending you texts. And whenever you're ready, I'm ready. That's not what I'm talking about. It's like, how do I impact your life outside of the transaction? How do I show that I understand you? And there's other ways I want to help you because I care. I care about what you've shared with me and I care that I can help you. So I think a lot of times we just we get all shortcutted out and we have the best intentions. But it's like anything. We hold on the bat sometimes too tight and we strike out. Yeah, it's a it's more of a transaction, I think, than it, focusing on just a transaction. And well, I mean, and there are sometimes that some people just want to focus on the transaction, right? Yeah, Depending well, on who you're dealing absolutely. with. But sometimes it's it is that. There's no question. It's a yes yeah. and I think uh, here. What you're talking about. One hundred percent. By the way, I'm on Clubhouse uh, live. So if anybody on Clubhouse in a few minutes, I'm gonna uh, open it up if you guys have a question. There's uh, questions is what we're asking. Um, so if anybody is just raise your hand, I'll, 
I'll bring you up. So let me ask you this. How, let's give some hows to uh, how does somebody become better at going into those, that the, the real stuff, right? The, the iceberg, the, the under the water, 90%. Yeah, I love us, that. Let's, let's give, why don't we give them two things, maybe three. Three is the yeah. bonus. The first one is, I would say, get real clear with yourself. Like, what? why am I even doing this in the first place? You know, am I really here because I believe in what I'm selling and how I can help people's lives? And if so, then let's use that as an anchor part, uh, anchor point or a place to like recharge our battery. So I think we got to take care of ourselves first, get clear on who we are, what we want. And, you know, listen to podcasts like this, like get get yourself always learning, stay in the game of always learning. Um, get confident so that you know who you are. So I think that's the first thing, kind of what can you control? You can control your sec- yourself. The second one is if you are going to start to kind of live this iceberg reality, it's about being present and finding out about someone's world. And you might go, well, what the hell does, you know, someone's world mean? It means, you know, what do you know that's going on in their life? If, if they're going to solve this thing, if you're going to solve this problem, what does that cause to make happen for them? Their team, their family like what they want out of their life, their goals, whatever it is. And if you can't answer those questions, I would actually not look at that as a negative, but as like blue sky, blue ocean, like awesome. I have all these people where I don't know this. Now I can go back and kind of reconnect with them and just say, hey, you know, I've been thinking about this problem you had, but I also wanted to wonder like, what would it make happen for you if if you got the house you wanted, right? If, if you bought this thing, if you got this whatever solved, like what would that look like? But but I would say if you're going to do that, be really prepared to share about yourself, share your own stories, things that get you excited, that are a little vulnerable. You might put yourself out there. I mean, like I'm 51 years old and I just told you I grew up selling Girl Scout cookies. Right? <laughs> like, come on. But it's true. And it's something about me that I'm proud of. And it's this really great memory. But I'm not sure there's many 50 year, 51 year old men out there be like, yeah, when I was nine years old, I sold Girl Scout cookies. Right. You're going to judge me. So I would just say, get confident with yourself and get confident sharing your own stories. And that confidence, self-confidence is going to allow that other person to, to, to come to you with what is their private world. And as you get to know that, it gets back to everything we've talked about, right? We can be of service. We can move away from just a transaction. We can build rapport. And ultimately, once we build rapport, most likely these people are going to be telling us what's next. They're actually going to ask me, how do we move forward versus me going, are you ready to move forward? Or I think you should move forward, right? So um, it's really powerful, but it, it definitely starts with your own inner game and how you want to show up. And that might be new to a lot of people. Um, it's not a traditional way how we've been taught to sell. It's slightly different. So so what you're saying is first, get confident in yourself while you're doing what you're doing. And then second, um, just become confident in in uh, what your, pro- your product, your ability to help the person, or maybe I, I didn't, I'm not articulating that right. Yeah. And, um, and and be be comfortable showing up as your true self, being comfortable so be sharing, sharing about you so they'll share about themselves. And I think that's the place a lot of times we forget. We we kind of show up okay. and throw up if you will. Hey, features benefit, feature benefit. This is so great. And it's like, well, wait, let's take a moment. Let's let's kind of tell our the story why we're in this, why we do this, some success stories we've had, how we like to impact, the changes we've seen, why we did this. And that kind of naturally opens the door to a conversation and rapport building. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm taking notes here and also inviting some people up uh, on the stage. So how do you know, uh, like, how, how does this is a fun question, because it's like you, you, I think you just have to do it for a while. But you tell me, like, is there a place where you're like, OK, I know now I've got what I need, like uh, it's gone deep enough or or how do you know maybe you're, you're both? You How do you know you're not there and how do you know you're there? So two questions. Yeah. Yeah, I I love that. Um, I think if you're at a place where you go, I'm I'm pretty sure I know what they're talking about versus I know exactly what they're talking about. So the first one I would say is, you know, you're at a place to start bringing solution when you can say, hey, based on what I what you told me, I'm pretty sure what you're trying to solve or what you want in your life is. Did I get that right? If you feel confident enough to say that, then you've probably spent enough time on the iceberg. But if you even processing that through your mind right now, you go, ah, that's too risky. Then that's probably one of those clues where, hey, spend a little bit more time. Ask one or two more questions. Um, 
And here's the thing, like it never hurts to ask another question. So, you know, if you think you know it, go ahead and ask a question to clarify that you do. So that's that would be my first clue, I think, I would say. And the second I would say is, you know, if you see the body language, if you start to brainstorm, you go, hey, let, just, just before we finish talking, did I hear this right? And if so, would this be a potential solution? Would you like a house like this? Would you like a whatever it might be like this? And like, yeah. You can tell with tonality and body language when somebody's like, you get my world. You get me. I'm excited. I'm so glad we're talking. This is a high use of my time. So those would be my clues. So and so the, so if somebody's sitting there with their arms crossed like this, still, that <laughs> probably means you you haven't uh, you haven't got, got it might yet, have right? Missed the boat already. Um, yeah. You might have missed yeah, the boat. Um, body language is pushing you away. Yeah. Well, let me, ask, so, you know, we'll go there for a minute. Um, what Wait. happens? Cause that does happen sometimes with people. Yes. So how do you handle that? If you're, if you're, uh, if you're sitting across from somebody and they're, they're just yeah. kind of, you know, shut off, they got their arms crossed. They just, you know, there's people that are like that. Yeah. So there, how do there you are. deal with that? There are. And, um, you know, I'm not going to say what I'm about to tell you works hundred percent of the time, hundred percent of the time, it might, you know, 80% of the time it works hundred percent of the time. It might be something like that. You know, I'm kind of joking. But I, I think there's a lot of different ways people go about that person with their arms crossed. And uh, the one that I recommend is I like to call the elephant in the room. I And I've gotten pretty good at that. So I think I would say something like, David, I'm guessing that however we've been talking the last 30 minutes, it's not resonating with you. I'm not sure I'm connecting with you. Um, and if is that true? You know, like that's what I'm observing. That's my experience. Um, and I have to claim it, it's mine. You know, my experience is I'm not sure this is working out. Like, is there something I didn't say yeah. or did I miss something? And I think that oftentimes that puts someone at ease. And even if they're not comfortable telling you, there's a shift in their mind. And at that point, I could say, well, um, my guess is I went instead of asking, hey, why do you want to live here? Why, you know, why do you want four bedrooms? I just went to, hey, I think I have the right place for you. And I might have shut you down. I might not have let you talk fully. And now that I've replayed in my head, I'd really like to go back in time if that's okay. And just ask you a couple more questions. And would it be okay if we hit the hard reset? It's not going to work all the time, but it's going to create a better chance of success than that person sitting across the room with, the, with their arms crossed. It's at least you're asking for permission for a reset. And not everyone's going to give it to you, but you're going to get some people that will, in my, in my experience. Yeah, it's a great answer. It, and it also shows your uh, authenticity that you're paying attention. You're not just sitting there, right, trying to sell them something, but you're actually present with everything happening in the space. You're engaged. So, yeah. and sure. People people pick up on that, right? Sometimes that's that'll be the difference maker where you might call somebody out where the other two salespeople sitting in front of them never said anything. And now all of a sudden you've connected with this person, right? Absolutely. You know, I think about how we show up and how we communicate and the the, the subtle signs or maybe not so subtle. Many years ago, when I started dating my wife, I went over to her condo and we're talking and the phone rings like she had a landline and a mobile phone. And I said, are you going to get that? And she's like, you're the only person I want to talk to you right now. It was so powerful, you know, and so I think if we are selling, we're really all about communication. We're all about how is that person in front of me? The only person in my life right now. And that is turning your phone upside down or turning it off, you know, staying focused, sitting, not, you know, maybe you're sitting with the back to the crowd to get distracted all the time. You know, you want to show that you're really present. This person's important. And it's the subtle things that can make the difference to start opening that door to connection and rapport building. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know. We don't have any questions today on clubhouse, so that's okay. Y'all can worries. listen to it after it'll be up on YouTube. It's, it's going to be on, on, uh, on iTunes and the video will be on YouTube. So make sure you're, you're checking out the YouTube channel. But uh, Carl, how do people get a copy of your book if they want to get in touch with you? Let's uh, let's share share some, some stuff with them. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, icebergselling.com. So hopefully you remember Iceberg Selling. You just go to the website and there's links galore to Amazon and Kindle and there'll be an audio version soon enough. Um, if you want to get a hold of me, you can always go through Iceberg Selling. But my, my company site is improvingsalesperformance.com. Also, uh, you can download the first chapter for free right now on icebergselling.com too. So uh, it's a book for salespeople. I really want to make it accessible um, after change and impacting people's lives. So 
hopefully you pick up something from it and get into action right away. But yeah, icebergselling.com would be the simple way. Let me ask you this question. That wasn't one I had planned. Well, is it, I, I have another question too, but okay. um, what's different? Like I have a book here, the sales playbook that I wrote on selling and there's, there's hundreds of thousands of books on selling, right? Like we, we know that. What, what's different about your book though? Why should somebody grab your book? What yeah. makes it different than all the others? Yeah, I really appreciate you asking me that because I do think there's different flavors, different books for different types of people. For me, what's really important is people's inner game. How do they change who they are and have kind of some aha moments? So my book is a lot more about, hey, here's some ways I can go from good to great. Here's some things that I might be able to take not only into sales, but my other relationships. The more I can understand people, the more I can show up of service. So I would say, you know, if you're looking for a book that's about how you show up differently, how you build stronger relationships, if that's what's important to you, relationship selling, solution selling, getting to know people, being of service, then the book's probably a really good fit for you. Um, it's not going to tell you the magic thing to say. My book isn't like, say this and you'll get that. And there's plenty of books out there and they're great books. For me, it's like, mm -hmm. hey, if you want to learn how to connect, maybe show up a little bit differently, bring that into your personal life too. get to know people, start seeing people as an iceberg. How does that change how I am in my life? Then it's probably a really good fit. That's awesome. I, I think, you, you know, it's funny as I was listening, I'm, I'm thinking like his, his process really is focused on the relationship. Like your book could have been called relationship selling, but that wouldn't, that's not a good enough title. <laughs> it's not, it's not as good as <laughs> I start selling. Reader, he's on my list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, anyway, cause you're, yeah, I get it. Um, final question for you today. Um, somebody's struggling. Uh, so you know, it's, uh, either someone uh, new or, or they've been in the business a while. Um, they're struggling. What what advice do you give them? Yeah. Well, first I would I would say claim it. Claim that you make a difference. Um, realize that you have the ability to potentially make unlimited revenue, unlimited salary, whatever you want to call it, bonuses. And and when you have that ability, you have the ability to impact your family. Or whatever you're, you know, maybe there's a nonprofit, maybe you want a car, maybe you want to, I don't know what it is, but you have the ability to achieve what you want to achieve. And I think a lot of times as salespeople, we get kind of beat down and we get in a rut. So I would say, gosh, pick yourself up. You have one of the best careers in the world where you can bet on yourself and make things happen for yourself and the people that you care about. So I think that's the first one. Get really reconnected that this is something special. Get clear what you play for. What's your why? Why am I doing this every day? And, you know, that might even be something where Take a picture. You put it on the mirror in your bathroom. This is the car I want, or this is the college I want to send my kid to, or whatever it is. But remind yourself, in, in a way, sell yourself of why mm. you did this and use that energy, bring that energy forward. Because ultimately, sales is such a mind game. And if we're not okay, if we're not charged up, then people can feel it and we just don't play very well. And when we don't play very well, we kind of start to get hard on ourselves. So flush all that away. Tomorrow's a new day. Make it yours. That's what I would tell you. That's great. Yeah, that's uh, that's perfect, man. I it's 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 also you know for people listening, uh, it's it's one of the it's one of the only careers where it doesn't really matter what the economy's doing. It doesn't matter what right. Like there's if you're good, and 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 I know I said that was the last question, but I you know I, I'm gonna let you go soon because I know we planned 35 minutes. Um, but it seems like right now a lot of people are struggling mentally with. Well, the economy, the inflation, um, there's, there's, there is a lot going on right now, right? Absolutely. Wars, potential. But so what do you say to those people? This is the, is the last question, and I'm going to leave it leave it the last word with you. But what I'm do you sure. say with, to those people? You know, you triggered a memory. Uh, when I was in my early 20s, I was in the financial industry, and I was buying books, used books, used bookstore to, to skill myself up. And there's one, and, and I don't know if this was the title, but it was like, there's never un any unemployment in sales. And the whole thesis was what you said. We always need communicators. We always need someone to solve people's problems. We always need someone to represent these solutions, i.e. sales, selling, getting this connection between a problem and a solution. We always need that. So I, here's the good news. Like, even if you're fatigued, you're, you're upset with the world, um, you have the ability to control you. And if you can sell, then you can control a lot of other pieces of the world. Like you can get behind a nonprofit. You can get behind 
uh, you know, you can sell a fundraiser for your kids if you really want them to play hockey, but you have the power where a lot of people don't. And they have to be a passenger in sales. We can be the driver of this car, go where we want to go, pull over when we want to pull over. There's not many people in the working economy that can do that. So, man, that's the that's the cool part. Like, be the change, be the change for yourself, your family, your company, because you can. It's really exciting. I'm all pumped now. I'm ready to go. <laughs> let's, let's go, man. All right. Well, listen, I thank you. I appreciate you being on the show. That was awesome. And uh, man, we may have to do this again. That was that was awesome. Thank you. I love that. Thank you. Really appreciate it. 